The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, my name is Brandy Kramer, and I am from Imprintables Warehouse, and I appreciate you joining the webinar today on the Duracell Prince Pattern Signed Vinyl. Uh, when using single color just isn't enough for you or your business. And today we're going to go, uh, we're going to focus on exploring the possibilities with our multi-pattern signed vinyl, and how can you can use the fashionable prints to make lettering, decals, custom logos for your customers. And uh, you'll see also just how easy Duracell prints are to cut and apply. So we're going to explore the possibilities and uh, learn how to use the fashionable prints and um, <clears throat> take a look and uh, see what we can do with the, uh, the patterns. And let's take a look here. Moving on to the next screen. Sorry about that all. I think we might be having some uh, technical difficulties. OK. Hmm. I appreciate your patience. It's not going. There we go. Sorry about that. Just a little bit of uh, facts about the Duracell prints. Um, it is a, available in a 20-inch wide roll. It's a 3.5 mil calendared signed vinyl, which uh, means uh, you know for easier application because uh, it is thicker than traditional signed vinyl. It does have a lay flat liner for easy application and removal. Has a two to three year, year uh, outdoor durability without lamination, and up to five years uh, durabilities with lamination. <laughs> and uh, lamination will increase the resistance of any scuffs, scratches, or scrapes. Here's an idea of what our uh, Duracell prints look like. This is our sports section. Sorry about the little blocks. Um, we actually had the uh, the names of the prints there for you to see, uh, so you could jot down any prints that you you liked. But obviously, the first one is uh, the baseball, and uh, we have got the golf balls to the right there, and then the football patterns and the soccer balls which will uh, hopefully be pretty popular when it comes to uh, your local teams and, uh, and whatnot. We have the uh, recreation patterns here, uh, the fish. We've got the uh, deer pattern and uh, checkered flag, which has uh, been asked for a few times when it comes to some of our um, you know, recreational uh, clubs that uh, do some uh, signed vinyl and uh, t-shirts and whatnot for for the uh, the car clubs and things and then the camo which will be uh, pretty popular I'm sure. Next is the uh, animal prints as you see we've got a uh, cheetah pattern, uh, the pink zebra and I believe this is the reptile and uh, the zebra And I believe this one here is the cow print. Sorry about that, folks. Next is our fashion patterns. Uh, we have the dark skulls and the flames. And this one here is called gears. And then we have the pink plaid, which is, is pretty cool. I've seen it on a couple uh, different mediums, cars, and some glassware. It's, uh, it cuts really nice. And then more of the fashion patterns. We have the tie-dye, which is probably going to be uh, very popular, along with the tie-dye zebra, and then the water. So hopefully, uh, if you uh, like any of those uh, patterns, jot them down. And uh, next, we're going to view um, just some different um, substrates that you can use. This is our checkered. There we go. And uh, hopefully now that I have your interest peaked a little bit, uh, you're sh you know, surely getting uh, to thinking that you might want to see a little bit more of this, and we can move into the equipment that you need uh, to get you started. And uh, the nice thing about the assigned patterns, too, 
it's very easy to add this to your existing uh, business and offer it to your existing customers. And the only equipment that you need uh, to go ahead and move into that is a cutter. And I'm sure most of you are already have a cutter. And um, that's really all that you're going to need. But uh, let's go ahead and just uh, take a moment and ask our first poll question. And to get an idea of how many of you have a cutter and what kind of cutter that you do own. Oops. I'm not quite sure where the uh, the first poll question is uh, popping up here. Thanks, Brandy. We do have the results. Uh, which cutter do you currently own? We have 47% that owns a Roland. We have 20% that owns a GCC. 20% that have GraphTech. 10 other. And we have 3% that does not have a cutter. Okay, thank you. Well, it's nice to know that uh, most of you do have um, the cutters, and um, I think I kind of got my PowerPoint uh, messed up a little bit, but I wanted to go back and take a, a closer look, and then we'll touch on the, um, the cutters real quick. But the, um, as you can see, this is the dark skull patterns uh, close up here, and uh, this is a back uh, winch window decal, the pink plaid on glassware. This is the, uh, oops, <laughs> the tie-dye um, on a locker. But uh, anyways, back to the, um, the equipment. I do uh, apologize about that. But the um, this is some of the uh, cutters that Imprintables Warehouse uh, offer. And the, the Roland GX24, I believe, is probably the most popular cutter. And, um, you know, a little bit about the GX24 it does use a digital servo motor to achieve the uh, maximum accuracy and cutting speeds for up to uh, 20 inches per second. Um, the the sufficient cutting area for the cutter is 22 inches, uh, and again, this this is a, only a 20 inch wide roll and has the ability to cut uh, large varieties of materials, including heat transfer vinyls, fine vinyl, twill. Uh, pre-printed transfers and uh, a lot more and the GX24 does come with its own design software it lets you uh, create and uh, cut designs <clears throat> and it also has a optical eye registration um, that recognizes crop marks uh, when you're working with um, heat transfers uh, such as uh, papers and uh, not to mention that it does have a free loaner program uh, so you are never out of production. If something uh, does happen, go ahead and send that back to Roland and uh, get another one out to you as a replacement for the time being. But anyways, uh, thanks for uh, listening to all that. For that 3% um, that don't have uh, cutters, it's just a little bit about our most popular uh, cutter, and that was the GX24 uh, that you see in the picture there. And it is uh, an awesome, awesome cutter. So let's go ahead and um, get back on track. Uh, now that you know that uh, all you need is a cutter, uh, we can go ahead and uh, talk about the accessories that you need in your shop for uh, making fine vinyl. And um, let's see here. Some of the um, accessories, um, we have application tape, uh, which are, is uh, people also can call mask and allows you to lift off um, the signed vinyl from the backing and allow you to go ahead and apply it. And we'll also uh, view a little, a couple different steps in a video um, moving forward. The um, the clear tape um, people do like to use uh, the clear tape. Uh, it comes in various different uh, sizes: six and a half, ten and a half, uh, fourteen. Uh, inch, 24 inch, and 30 inch, and the benefits of the clear application tape is that you can see clearly through the tape uh, to view your design, and that is especially helpful uh, when you're using uh, multi-layering uh, signed vinyl. And uh, here, the second one down, we have the DuraPro, which is our paper tape, and um, 
we stuck that in uh, different sizes as well, uh, six and a half inch, 10 and a half uh, inch, 14 inch, and 24 inch. And depending on uh, what graphic that you are making is going to dictate the size that you need. Um, and the benefits of uh, the paper masking, it does allow you to apply your sign vinyl using uh, the wet application technique. And we'll touch on that as well. Uh, here's some of uh, different products. It's our Rapid Tack. And again, it's just some added accessories um, that will make your application process uh, easier. And um, let's see here. The rapid prep uh, is used to clean the area prior to uh, applying the graphic. It's going to remove any kind of um, oils uh, or residues that may be on the surface of the area that soap and water cannot remove. Uh, so that's handy to have uh, in the shop as well. Uh, rapid Tack 1 is used to spray the application area and it will enhance the adhesive bond of the vinyl uh, to the surface area. And the ideal temperature uh, for using um, and applying fine vinyl is typically between 40 and 90 degrees. And uh, there are times where um, people you know, are applying fine vinyl in cold weather. Uh, so we do carry a product called Rapid Tech 2. And um, that is used when cold weather application uh, is going to be uh, used. It's a little bit more aggressive, and uh, you don't really want to use it with cast vinyl um, that has a more aggressive uh, tack to it anyways. Uh, over here to the bottom is the Sela pen. And it's a handy little accessory to have in your shop when you need to have extra protection around the edges of your graphic. And it will help prevent the lifting up on the outer ed edges of the graphic and uh, add UV protection. We also carry uh, the X-Acto knife, of course, uh, which is used to pierce the graphic and remove any kind of air bubbles uh, during uh, your application. And of course, squeegee. I'm sure everyone is familiar with our squeegees, and uh, they definitely are a necessity to have in the shop. And you know, take it home and use it in the kitchen, too. It's, uh, it's what I like to do sometimes. but. Um, Anyways, um, that's just kind of the accessories uh, that we do carry um, uh, to add to your inventory in the sign shop. And I do wanted, I, I did want to touch on, and I had a customer call in, I believe, the other day, and uh, she was, she had to make a lot of different uh, decals. And uh, what she did was she went ahead and, um, you know, pre-cut all of her decals. She kept the application tape. Uh, she was using the paper tape, and she she kept it. Um, she cut out her um, graphic, weeded it out, and uh, applied the application tape. And she just kind of left it on there. And then she was able to give them to uh, her customer, and they applied it themselves. So I just kind of want to add that little uh, little tidbit there. But um, let's see here, on to uh, the cutting press process. I'm sure a lot of you um, are familiar with fine vinyl, so I did want to get an idea of, um, you know, we'll bring up our second poll question is, uh, if do you offer fine vinyl uh, to your existing customers? Be kind of curious to see uh, what everybody everybody says. Thanks, Brandy. Um, do you offer sign vinyl to your existing customers? Uh, Fifty-seven percent of our poll of audience are offering sign vinyl, and forty-three percent are not. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, well, it's nice to see that a lot of you um, have made um, that transition into sign vinyl, whether you started off with sign vinyl and then went to heat transfer or vice versa. Um, but the 43% um, that's not currently offering sign vinyl, I certainly hope uh, you you get the, the information that you need to go ahead and make that decision today. But uh, we'll go ahead and move into the cutting process. And um, most of you are familiar with this, um, as we saw from our poll. Uh, but there's a lot of you that's not. And um, you can get an idea of how 
easy it is um, to go ahead and uh, cut the uh, signed vinyl. Basically, it's the same exact process uh, with the heat transfer, uh, except for one, which is you won't be mirroring anything. So um, anyways, so here is a, a picture of uh, us cutting the uh, fine vinyl. We're using the GX24. And as you can see, we have nice uh, clear cut lines. Um, this is the, the dark uh, skulls. And you load it onto the GX24 with the, the vinyl facing up. Uh, just like the heat transfer vinyl that I'm sure that you all are used to using now. The, um, we recommend that you use a 45 degree blade, um, standard or carbide. Cutting pressure should be around 90 grams of force. Um, that's going to depend, of course, on the wear and tear of your blade. And um, you know, with cutting any kind of new material uh, into your machine, of course, always good practice to do a test cut before cutting uh, the entire graphic. And again, the cutting orientation is in the positive, and uh, that would be different. And the weeding, uh, removing the vinyl from the, from the cutter and weeding the excess vinyl from your graphic, uh, of course, we use our little handy-dandy uh, weeding tool and um, kind of look like dental picks, but most of you know the little trick of uh, placing the cut box around the graphic uh, or letters that you're, you're doing. And as you can see, we have the, uh, the M ski there. And just imagine if you would have maybe uh, a couple more. Uh, it is a lot uh, easier to weed out a cut box um, instead of actually um, having numerous lines involved in your job uh, and trying to weed that all around at the same time. And that allows you to get rid of the extra material uh, quickly and easily. And the signed vinyl is sticky, and it seems to be easier than having a big ball of uh, sticky material that you're trying to weed away from your graphic, uh, your letters, or your numbers. And uh, of course, you want to go ahead and carefully do that. And having that cut box around there, it does make it a lot easier. <clears throat> we'll go ahead on to uh, the masking. And uh, here you're, we're using the uh, R tape, which is uh, the clear masking tape. And as you can see, it is um, uh, hovering above uh, there in the first picture. But um, you're going to want to go ahead and piece, uh, cut the piece of application tape that's pretty much going to be uh, fitting your design. And start in the center and moving outward, uh, you're going to go ahead and uh, squeegee that slowly and evenly. And a little uh, tip for when you are laying down the mask, you're going to want to go ahead and bring it up in, into a, like almost a U. You're going to uh, put the center of the mask down first and then let that uh, flow out to each end evenly. And then you're going to lightly squeegee and mask from either side to side or top from bottom to ensure a good bond uh, with the mask. And then you're going to uh, pull it off. And here is uh, just a couple pictures of the application. Uh, proper application is uh, crucial for the durability of your graphic. Uh, we certainly recommend the temperature of around 40 to 90 degrees. Uh, you're going to wash and rinse the application uh, with detergent, soapy water, or you can use uh, the rapid prep spray that we mentioned earlier. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, dry that with a clean uh, lint-free towel or cloth. You don't want to you know, put any um, pieces of fabric on there or anything like that. And there's two different um, ways that you can go ahead and apply your graphic. You can do a dry application, uh, which is recommended for either small uh, decal or lettering. And um, basically what the dry application is, you're going to lay down the decal onto the desired surface, layering or laying the, uh, the center down first and moving out towards the towards the edges of the design until the de decal is completely stuck uh, with a squeegee. And you're going to go ahead and apply firm, uh, firm pressure with the application squeegee. <clears throat> And then you just pull it back uh, slowly by use about a 180 degree angle, you know, from the side down. And if there's any ear bubbles or anything like that, you can go ahead and pop them uh, by using an X-Acto knife, uh, pin, or whatever, and then go ahead and smooth the vinyl down. So it looks pretty easy so far, doesn't it? 
and um, the the wet application um, is a process ideal for larger decals uh, in lettering, and that's what uh, I believe they used for the uh, MSCI there. Um, <clears throat> And what you do is you spray the entire surface uh, with a very thin film of the Rapid Attack uh, 1. Typically, it's used the most, or Rapid Attack 2, um, you know, if it's in colder temperature. And you squeegee the liquid across the entire application area. And uh, make sure you don't have any kind of, like, puddles or anything like that. And then you slowly uh, lay down the decal, having uh, the wet surface will allow you to move uh, graphic to the desired uh, position, and uh, that is important when you are, you know, working with larger graphics, and you need to have, you know, that perfect fit. Because once you lay down the graphic on the dry surface, it's there to stick. It's it's not going anywhere. And if you do try to pull up your graphic, um, it will stretch and stuff like that, and and possibly rip. So uh, when you use doing anything uh, large or anything like that, you would want to consider the wet application. And it's pretty much the same. Um, the same technique as the dry application. You're going to you know, lay down the decal, position it where you want to. You're going to be able to move it around because of the wet application and uh, apply firm pressure with the application squeegee. Start at the center uh, using the upward, downward motion uh, until the decal is firmly stuck into position. And uh, again, it's important to remember to let the decal dry underneath before trying to release uh, the paper application. If it's still uh, pretty damp under there or wet, uh, when you pull the application uh, tape off, it's going to come off with the application tape. And uh, I've troubleshooted a couple times um, on some existing cu customers about the um, the application. Um, they were using the wet application, and they just weren't letting it allow to dry underneath. And uh, so we went ahead and uh, let it dry a little bit, and, and then it's stuck just fine. So uh, once dried, you can go ahead and uh, slowly pull the application uh, tape off. And let's take a look here. And as you can see, the uh, the clear tape are squeezing it on, and there it is as a finished project uh, product. And uh, now that we've discussed a little bit about the facts and the details and techniques um, of the signed vinyl uh, that you viewed, um, we can go ahead and I'd like you all to view um, Lee Trenches, uh, which is our, our, a, our expert in uh, signed vinyl here at Imprintables Warehouse. And I wanted you to get an idea of how easy it is uh, in person. Then you'll go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Let me go ahead and uh, bring that up. Give me one moment here. Okay. Give me one second. And hopefully you'll be able to uh, have volume as well. And here's, uh, I don't mean to interject or anything, but Lee's uh, speaking about the uh, Duracal 530, which is our solid colored um, signed vinyl, and same application techniques uh, for the pattern signed vinyl, of course. He's applying that onto a uh, banner.
Okay, sorry about that. I um, just had an audience question that there was no sound, and I, I certainly apologize for the um, lack of audio. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the sound uh, isn't going to play. Um, anyways, he's uh, using the uh, Duracell Fine Vinyl, uh, the black, on our uh, Roland GX24. And um, inserting the, the vinyl side up. So you can go ahead and uh, cut through the fine vinyl, uh, but not the paper backing. So you're about like uh, 90 grams of force, like we discussed earlier. <clears throat> I can go ahead and ad lib for them, but you know I'd be afraid what I would say. I wish I had sound. And then you'll see the uh, GX24 in action. Uh, it's just uh, cutting the black Duracal 530. And uh, once done cutting, he goes ahead and uh, cuts the strip across. Now he's going to go ahead and uh, weed the excess away and prepare that to be placed on his uh, banner, which has already been grommeted and uh, taped. And I would be happy to uh, send anybody the, the link, and it will be uh, posted on uh, GG, G, uh, uh, Great Garment Graphics uh, website. Again, this is cut in the positive. It's not mirrored. And here we are using the 6.5 inch clear DuraPro, or I'm sorry, the R-Tape. Dura Pro's uh, the paper tape. Again, he's uh, kind of creating that uh, horseshoe, laying it down in the middle, letting it fall out to the edges. And what that does is um, that kind of pushes the air out to the edges, um, which eliminates um, some of the air bubbles. And he's squeegeeing. And upwards and downwards motion to get rid of any kind of the air bubbles to create a, um, a good <clears throat> bond between the tape and the sign vinyl. And voila, there you go. the imprintables warehouse and he's going to go ahead and uh, prepare the banner unless I think he has already it was just cleaning the surface you can use the rab attack um, on a number of different surfaces uh, it, it's not going to be harmful or anything like that when it comes to different substrates that you're going to be applying your signed vinyl on and it's it's always good rule of thumb to make sure that you clean any application area that you're going to be applying on. Uh, we do recommend, of course, you know, the, the, uh, the rapid prep just because of, uh, you know, any kind of oils or, or different kinds of material or uh, not materials, but uh, things that can be on there that water, soap and water can't get rid of. He's doing a wet application on the banner. As you can see, he sprayed it again and is lightly uh, wiping it back. You don't want to have any kind of puddles or anything like that when it comes to uh, applying. He's going to use the same technique as the masking. You know, some of you may, if you're going to be, you know, doing this for a customer, you you know, you you may want to get a roller and precisely get the middle of the banner, and again, making that you to try to eliminate as many air bubbles as you possibly can, and squeegeeing in the up, upward, and downward motion. And that's just pretty much an idea of how easy it is to use fine vinyl. 
You don't need to introduce a lot of different products into your business. And it seems as the, from the polls that most of you already have cutters already uh, in your shops. <clears throat> And there you are. Again, that is the uh, DuraCal 530. And um, since you watched a video on that, uh, it is a uh, five-year premium gloss vinyl. It's three mil. It's a little thinner uh, than the pattern. And the application instructions go just like with the uh, pattern fine vinyl. And it does come in a number of a variety of different colors, uh, the DuraCal. We also have um, <clears throat> reflective uh, etched glassing, which is pretty popular, um, translucent, fluorescent, um, dry erase. And it comes in 27 different colors uh, in the DuraCal. And let me go ahead and bring the webinar back up. And in the meantime, we do have the Arlon as well, which is a um, solid colored vinyl. And that comes in 39 different colors and different sizes are available. Oh, wait a minute here. There we go. Sorry about that. <clears throat> the um, solid colored fine vinyl that we have comes in a variety of different uh, sizes. It comes in 15 inch by 10 yards, uh, 24 inch wide by 10 yards, and then we also have 30 and uh, 48 available in a wide variety of colors. You can always log on to our website um, after the webinar and take a look at um, the solid color along with the, the patterns. So let's go ahead and uh, move forward. Give me one second here. Oops. Hmm. Okay. Um, now that we've talked about a little bit about the uh, the pattern sign vinyl, the solid colored sign vinyl, and the application processes, and and what you need to introduce that into your business, um, here's just a couple of uh, points why you should do that. The existing customer base um, of adding sign vinyl to your business, you know, pretty much it's a it's a minimal initial cash investment. Uh, and it consists of potentially big prop profit for you. Um, you know, now these days the public demands one-stop shopping. You know, you look around, you see all the WalMarts that are now carrying uh, tools, automotive, groceries, uh, handy, you know, handy stuff for around the house. So um, the one-stop shopping is something that the public is looking for, and you can easily expand your heat transfer business. Uh, to include uh, sign material. And the best part of it is that you already have the equipment necessary uh, to start offering sign um, vinyl to your customers. And all you need is you know, a cutter, some sign material, and some of the accessories uh, that, you'd, that you've already saw today. And then you're ready to make some signs. Um, graphics, whatever, and uh, you're able to extend that to your existing customers. And just real quick, one of the best examples um, I've seen is, you know, you make some you sh some, some shirts for a business. And if you ask them if they use any signage for their, you know, the cars, their buildings, advertising, um, most of them say yes, that they do, and they outsource that. And already you have their logo, you have their artwork, so why not offer signs, decals, uh, yard signs, banners uh, to the, uh, your existing customers. And ideally, the customer will view that as an added convenience uh, to their marketing and advertising needs. And to, they get it at one place. And you're just giving them less of a reason to go somewhere else. And uh, the perceived value um, of the the DuraCal prints is ideally, you know, you're already offering customer signed vinyl. And adding the DuraCal prints to your inventory, it's just an additional way to upsell uh, your customers that are considering a solid color graphic. 
And with this day and age, you know, people are always looking for different ways uh, to make their name pop, uh, to make their logos different, to make them pop, to make them, you know, have that wow factor. And the Duracal prints is it's a good way for you to offer uh, printed signed vinyl uh, without having the expense of a printer or even a graphic artist. And the cu customer's perceived value does increase because the Duracell prints are unique. And it lets your customer express themselves uh, in their, their own way. And uh, the different applications uh, for the marketing of the sign vinyl um, it's very easy to use as you saw from the presentation um, it's not it's 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 not as different uh, from the heat transfer vinyl that you Use to sign vinyl on walls, and I kind of wanted to touch this on a little bit. The the wall using the uh, Duraprints or the Duracal or the Arlon on the walls uh, you can do. However, th that would be more of a permanent application. Uh, we have a couple um, photos for you to go ahead and see at the end uh, of the the webinar, and it just gives you ideas. Uh, it's just things that I picked up uh, from um, the web, and it just kind of caught my eye. Uh, but for the wall graphics, they are more for permanent. Uh, you know, if you tear them off, you will see that the paint come off or the drywall or whatever. But, you know, typically people that want to put a wall graphic up, they don't want it up just for a couple weeks. But uh, people use them on lockers, uh, cell phones, laptops bicycles, ATV, um, fleet trucking, uh, helmets, sports equipment, storefronts, banners um, <clears throat> for uh, school, sports, um, things like that, and um, political teams for decals, stuff like that. Here's uh, some pictures um, of some possibilities that you can take the um, sign vinyl. The, uh, as you can see, the lettering there. Uh, most likely is uh, signed vinyl, and a lot of these I, I wasn't unable to find um, or get uh, the, the, Duric, uh, the Duracal prints. <clears throat> but again, um, these are just going to give you ideas and different avenues of where you can take the, the signed vinyl. Uh, the sport on the sports helmet. Here's a, a, a large banner. Here's a sign for a uh, you know a cafe. Here's a uh, sign uh, graphic, a wall graphic that you know is basketball with the hoop or whatever. Here's a bonsai tree. I really thought that was cool, <laughs> so I just threw it in there. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea of where you can take this uh, to your customers, whether they're personally. Um, personalizing everything because you know now these days everything is about uh, personalizing everything from lunchbox to kids backpacks and, and things like that so uh, here's a decal on the back of a uh, SUV and here is a uh, camo or, or whatever decal on a truck <clears throat> here's some fleet uh, designs there Here's a cell phone case, which I, I thought that was pretty cool. You might not be able to wrap it around because this is a calendared vinyl um, and not a cast. However, you can get the idea to go ahead, you know, just imagine if it's a you know, person's initials or, you know, a, a logo, business logo of some sort. Here's an outside sign for uh, the dentist. And this one is one of my favorites. It's a floor graphic. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, McIntyre. Uh, it looks like it is a double layer. And again, um, using the patterned prints, uh, this would be pretty cool, whether it's for um, you know, a wedding, a school function, political function. 
uh, here's a couple examples of the wall graphics. Um, again, this would be most likely for permanent use. Uh, the uh, peace signs, little kids wall graphic. Uh, here's a laptop. Again, you may not be able to do those compound curves. Um, this will be used for uh, cast graphic, or I'm sorry, cast vinyl. <clears throat> but again, you would be able to, you know, put, um, you know, a logo of the local college, uh, initials, uh, things like that. Another uh, art graphic, which I thought just was cool. Mailbox. Different things, a lot of different things that you can do uh, with the signed vinyl. Uh, here are some graphics on a uh, car. And next one is just another uh, sign for outdoor. Remember, this does have an uh, outdoor durability. This is when you would want to laminate. Uh, depending on your customer's needs, uh, we do have the product that you need to laminate your sign box. And it will just extend that uh, durability. Another wall graphic. Got some um, zebra print with, uh, along with some solid color sign vinyl. And again, down here, some political signage. And I you know, certainly wanted to uh, thank you all for uh, watching the Dur Cal Prince uh, webinar today. I do have a poll question. Um, I'd like to get the uh, feeling uh, after you've viewed today's webinar if you would think adding Dur Cal Prince uh, would be a valuable product for your business. Thanks, Brandy. Well, we have 94% that thinks yes, that the product will be valuable to their business, and 6% that says no. Okay. Well, the um, I actually, I like those odds, the 6%, you know, um, you can call in. Maybe I can change your mind, but no, the, um, I'm glad that you guys have uh, watched the webinar, stayed with me for the 42 minutes since we've been on here, and uh, if I can answer any questions for you, I certainly would like to extend everybody the 15% discount um, on your first order uh, for the Doracal prints. So you'll be uh, also getting a uh, special today of the 4165. And if there's any other uh, questions that I could maybe answer. We do have a couple qu questions, Brandy. We have one that asks, what type of vinyl do you recommend? Um, for... Sorry, I guess they cut off. Um, they didn't actually say, well, here's a good one. What is a typical dry time for the wet application? Well, it depends on um, probably what uh, substrate that you are um, you know, putting the spray on. Obviously, glass probably would have the most, um, you know, the longest dry time. You would just want to make sure that you, with a light uh paper towel or whatever, remove the, you know, spread around the, the spray or, you know, the water or whatever that you're doing it with. Um, and lay down your graphic. Obviously, it's going to still be able to move and let that dry. I don't know. Like, again, it, it depends. It depends on the substrate that you're putting it on. I would say, you know, 15 mi minutes. And if you do try to pull that up in one little corner and you see that it's starting to lift up, obviously it's not dry enough and to go ahead and allow a little bit more dry time. But as long as you, you know, squeegee that area, you know, get, make sure it's moist and not really wet, um, you should be fine with the, uh, the wet application. Thank you so much for that answer. We have another question. Um, they want to know, can you purchase sample sheets of the vinyl? Uh, samples? Uh, 
Hello? I'm sorry, can you hear me? I think I lost everybody. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Yes, they want to know if you can purchase sample sheets, like in smaller rolls or smaller sample pieces to try out. Well, okay. At this time, we are offering the, uh, the 10 yards. Um, as for samples, um, go ahead and uh, please call uh, Imprintables, and uh, we'll get an idea of what you're looking for. And um, we do, we, we can probably go ahead and do um, one yard uh, increments for about $8. Okay, thank you so much. And our final question, they would like to know, how would you get the graphic on the floor off? Well, if you apply the graphic on the floor, um, we do have a uh, rapid remover, which will help you go ahead and remove that graphic, you would just pull it off. Obviously, you're going to destroy the graphic um, with the removal. Uh, but we do have the, uh, the RabbitTac uh, product, which is uh, a remover. And depending on, depending on what uh, you know, floor that you're applying it onto, it, it shouldn't be a problem to go ahead and remove that and uh, use the remover for any kind of extra adhesive. On okay, well, thank you. That is all of our questions. Okay, well, again, thank you so much for uh, attending the uh, webinar, Duracal Prints. Certainly hope that you call in to Imprintables Warehouse, 1-800-347-0068, and ask any further questions that you may have about our Duracal Prints, and take advantage of the 15% discount today. Thank you so much.